Hi, Virgo. You've got an emotional situation here that is moving into calmer waters, but it's going to require patience and it's going to require you coming at it with love to transform the situation. Let's get into the cards and tell the story right here on Mojo Tarot. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. This is Jojo and I'm so honored and grateful for all of you guys being here, watching my little videos, checking out my channel, all the neat things. I really do greatly appreciate it. If you will, pretty please hit that little like button for me. It's right there. It's right there. Just boop. That's all you got to do. Yes, thank you for all your likes, shares, subscribes, comments, all the neat things that help my little channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Please make sure you're doing this for other tarot readers and other content providers out there. It really does help us, so pretty please. Click that little like button, and if you like my vibe, subscribe. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Today is going to be, we have a general read for the sign of Virgo. This could be Virgo in any of your placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Uranus, North Node, however it resonates with you. If it resonates with you, it's for you. If it does not resonate with you, there are two links in the description box where you can get your free natal chart and you can feel free to check out any of my other reads for your sign placements. Mm -hmm. And it's always good to know your chart anyway. I especially recommend checking out your rising sign, your moon sign, and definitely your north node. That is your path. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Virgo. Ah, love me some Virgos. They are exquisite, wonderful people. They really are. Some of the best friends you could possibly have. All right. So, since this is a general read, please remember that roles can be reversed. There is no gender in tarot, and all of my reads are timeless. So, whenever you find this, it's labeled as mid-September. That's when I'm putting this uh, out. As a matter of fact, today... It's Virgo season. Happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. Happy birthday to ya. Woo! Party time. I hope you get all the cake and ice cream that you could possibly ever want. And I hope you have had a fabulous birthday. Love me some Virgos. Happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. Let's see. It is officially the end of retrograde, or it's about to be the end of Mercury retrograde, which is your ruling planet. It also rules Gemini. I myself just happen to be a Gemini sun, and Mercury retrograde sucks because apparently during that time I cannot type without having at least a bazillion typos in it. You know, and people have to learn how to read Taiwanese to be able to read what it is that I type. I've invented cuss words because of this. But retrograde is coming to an end. There'll be a little bit of a shadow period, and things will lighten up. Yay! Because there's about, a there's what, six, seven, six planets in retrograde right now? I mean, I don't know how we can walk, or chew gum, or stand up. It's just it's, there's, there's craziness, craziness out there. Uh, anyway, so Virgo, let's get on with your read here. This is going to be the person you are thinking of. Now, generally this is thought of as romantic, but it's whoever is renting space in your mind. You know, whoever is living rent-free in your mind. Who are my Virgos thinking of? We're going to start out with how do you see this person, Virgo? How do my little virgins see this person that they are thinking of? How do you see this person that you are thinking of? Wow. Two of Cups. Wow. The Emperor. And the Queen of Pentacles. Underneath the bottom of the deck, we've got the Two of Swords. Well, 
you see them as an extreme love interest. You see them as somebody who has leveled up, somebody who has taken control of their life, male or female, doesn't matter, an emperor or empress. But you see this person as someone who is a potential partner. I mean, you got the feels for them, Virgo. Ah, uh, you love them. You love them. You know that you do. You love them. You love them. Oh, gosh. Uh, yes. So you see them as two of cups, lovey-dovey. You see that this person has leveled up, has taken control of things, and is taking care of business, so to speak. And here you've got the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is your card. Represents Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is somebody making wise decisions in life, love, and finances. This is somebody caring, nurturing, loving, very intelligent, somebody mature, somebody that is um, taking care of things and is a sweet, wonderful person. And I notice here that we've got the We've got the Emperor here looking at the Queen of Pentacles, and we've got the Queen of Pentacles looking at the Emperor. And now notice that they're, I don't know if you can see this. Let me, let me show this. This is how I'm looking at the cards. You see how they're not really looking at each other? They're both looking at each other's crotches. They're looking down, like the Emperor is looking down at that, that, that shiny Pentacle, and the Queen of Pentacles is looking down like, look at that Emperor ass. Mm -mm. Him and his fine chicken boots. Whatever, whatever is going. What, what is that with the roosterness? I mean, it's, it's. I don't know. I've, I've never appreciated chicken claw boots myself. I can, you know, the, the roosterness. That's a little bit of cockiness going on there. There's some. There's some. What? I, mm -mm. No, no. I know exactly how eggs became breakfast food. Because any animal or species that wakes us up that early in the morning, we eat their young. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't wake me up. And I know technically the egg is an unfertilized egg, so it really has nothing to do with the rooster. But if the rooster is going to crow that early in the morning, I'm, I'm doing something to its species. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. Plus, I enjoy eggs. I like them. They're good. However, these two, yeah, they're, they're you you're seeing this person as a potential counterpart. You love them. You love them. So you see them as two of cups. But there's a decision to be made. The two of swords is somebody going within to make a decision for their with their own intuition for their highest good. This is, as my Virgo friend Roro says, the Luke Skywalker card. The Luke Skywalker card is when Luke Skywalker was blindfolded with the helmet. He put the little helmet on to fight the little floaty ball that was shooting all the lasers at him and whatnot. And he had to use the force and his intuition to figure out how to defend himself against the little spiky floaty ball. Hmm. If you haven't seen Star Wars, I highly recommend it. Uh, however, there's a decision that needs to be made about this and somebody is wrestling with their shadow side and their light side to make a decision within themselves and using their own intuition to make this decision. This is how you see them. This is them. You see them having to make a decision apparently about this situation. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay, Virgo, let's check this out. How does this person see you? How does this person see you? Now, we, we've got the two of cups. You know, you see them as two of cups. You obviously have extreme emotion. Now, whether that's romantic or not, I don't know, but I, you get the feeling with two of cups that, yes, it definitely is romantic. How do they see you, Virgo? Knight of Swords. The Hanged Man. 
and the Queen of Swords. Underneath the bottom of the deck, the Tower. Well, Virgo, they see you as someone that is on the move. You're making decisions. You are taking action. Now, the Knight of Swords can be somebody that makes impulsive actions. This is the fastest moving knight in the deck doesn't always have to be a completely impulsive act, but it can be. So they definitely see you taking action somehow. Now, whether they feel it's impulsive or not, we're not sure. Knight of Swords is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The Hanged Man this is Carter Pisces. They see you as someone who has changed their mind about something, who is enlightened about whatever. And obviously, because of your enlightenment, now you have grown from the Knight of Swords to the Queen of Swords in their eyes. You have obviously advanced or moved up in this person's eyes, and I believe that Hanged Man could be them. You may have learned something and leveled up, and now they have changed their mind about you. They've had an epiphany about you. Queen of Swords is somebody that earned her crown by removing the sword from her own back. She is still very kind, very loving, very nurturing, can be kind, can also be cutting with her words. This person only speaks the truth and will only accept the truth, and this person will cut you off in a heartbeat. And if need be, this person can be very cutting with their words. The King or Queen of Swords can both absolutely split your soul in half by uttering a couple of sentences if they need to. The Queen of Swords is still very kind and understanding. This person is nurturing. This person is intelligent, highly intelligent, and usually a very, very good and thorough communicator. Um, this is the card of Gemini, by the way. Uh, it can be any sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, but uh, typically the Queen of Swords is seen as Gemini. The Tower card. The Tower card represents something that happens that is unforeseen that shakes up the foundation and causes an extreme emotional shift. It's a card of burning things to the ground to completely dismantle the foundation of what was there because the foundation was not strong to begin with. How they see you is as a Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords, Hanged Man. They've changed their perception of you. You've leveled up. And for whatever reason, this is causing some kind of tower moment in this particular situation. So, Virgo. My oh my. I myself am a Virgo rising. Well, I can identify with the Queen of Swords thing because I'm a Gemini son. Hmm. But never mind that. Let's keep going. Well, how do you feel about this person, Virgo? How do you feel uh, about this person? This emperor. Oh, whoa. My, oh, my. Seven of Pentacles in reverse again. You know, this just came out this way for the Leo reading, um, which is a fairly intense reading. The Lover's Card, Card of Gemini, and the Knight of Cups. Underneath the bottom of the deck, we've got the Three of Cups. This is how you feel about this person, Virgo, the the card of seven of pentacles in the reverse is not making plans for the future. It is not changing. You're, you're doing something and you're doing it the same way. Seven of pentacles on the upright is changing your strategy, thinking about long term, thinking about your investments, looking at how to get more pentacles out of this plant, how to how to nurture and grow the situation. Seven of pentacles in reverse that is not nurturing the situation. 
you apparently do not want to nurture whatever the situation is. You you are not making any plans forward. The lover's card, card of Gemini. This apparently is about a love situation. Now, this is how you feel about them. You Either you don't want to move this forward or they don't. They may not want to you may feel like this person does not want to work on things with you because this is how you feel about them. You may, you either don't want to work with them or you feel like they don't want to work with you. The lover's card. This is a card of Gemini. It's a card of a, a love union. Now back in the day, the lovers used to be called the choice. So you may feel as though this person has a choice or you have a choice in the situation. And apparently there is how you feel. You want to offer a cup of love to someone. Go find out what this is about, but you, you definitely have love for someone and apparently want to celebrate with them and or reunite with someone from your past. This can be the card of reconciliation. It can be the card of third parties. It can be the card of just going out and having fun with friends or family, just celebrating, having a good time with things. But you may want to reunite with someone from your past. Um, but whatever this situation is, either they don't want to work with you or you don't want to work with them in whatever capacity, whatever this situation is, and you're wanting to offer, you're, you're seeing a lover, you're wanting to offer your cup of love to someone, and you're wanting to celebrate with them. That's how you feel. And again, this person, either you want to offer this person something and they don't want to work with you, or you don't want to work with this person that's on your mind and want to offer your love and want a choice and want to offer your love somewhere else to go celebrate and be happy. That's the two ways that I can read that particular little scenario. So how does this person feel about you, Virgo? How does this person feel about my Virgos, my wonderful Virgo collective? What do we have for my Virgos? How do they feel about my gorgeous Virgo collective? Right there. Five of Cups. The Ace of Cups. And the Five of Swords. Underneath the bottom of the deck, Page of Swords. This person's sad, Virgo. They're sad. So apparently you don't want to work with someone and they are very, very sad about it. They're sad because they want to offer you this cup of love. You know, this the five of cups is a card of regret. I mean, there's 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 still emotion there. It's right there. The two of cups are still up. Now, you see this person as the Two of Cups. And this person is sad about something else. This is a confusing little situation here, Virgo. So place yourself where you see fit. Again, remember, roles can be reversed. Um, somebody does not want to work with someone else. And that's causing someone to be sad. Whoever that is, now this is how they feel about you. They, they could feel like you're sad about something else that's happened. Or they feel like they are sad about you. Either way, Whoever this person is wants to offer you a cup of love. They want to offer you the Ace of Cups. And they feel like there's some struggle and strife going on in this situation. 
there may be some arguments or, or something going on that they, they feel like there's some strife going on. The Page of Swords, this is, uh, again, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. It could be kids involved in this situation. This could be someone a little bit younger than you. But they, they could be spying on you. This is the why talk when you can stalk card. Somebody could be looking you up online, looking at your Facebook, looking at your Instagram, checking out your photos. Uh, they, they could be gathering information about you. It doesn't always have to be a card of spying. It can just be a card of a message. The pages are messengers in the tarot and the page of swords. The page of swords can bring news either way. The Page of Swords can bring good news, and the Page of Swords can bring bad news, sharp, cutting bad news. So you, again, take this as it resonates, because there's several different ways that this could play out. So place yourself where you see fit in the story, and only take what resonates for you. But this is how they feel about you. Uh, they could feel like you are spying on them. They could feel like you are looking up their Facebook and Instagram. They could feel like you are, you know, being a bit of a spy yourself. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. The plot thickens, Virgo. It do, it do, it do. So what is the current situation between you and this person on your mind, Virgo? And they see you as the queen of swords. They they know that if they see you in the queen of swords mode, they think that um, you feel if you don't get the truth, you are going to cut somebody off and shoot them in the face with the bazooka. Again, I don't know why I had that reference, shoot them in the face with the bazooka. It's just something I have with a kid. I've never even laid hands on a bazooka. I mean, they're very expensive and illegal, and you can't get them on the black market, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I have no desire for a bazooka. Well, until my cat messes something up, and then, yeah, let's just leave it there. What is the current situation between my Virgo and this person on their mind? What is the current situation between my Virgo and the person on their mind? Six of Swords, moving things to calmer waters. King of Cups, somebody is emotionally mature, not necessarily expressive. And the Knight of Coins, a Knight of Pentacles, and is somebody moving very, very, very slow with an offer. And the King of Wands, underneath the bottom of the deck. So, the current situation is somebody is moving things on to calmer waters towards a king of cups, somebody loving, somebody caring, somebody nurturing, not always the most expressive with their emotions, but this person is emotionally mature and has emotions for the other person. Again, male or female does not matter. Uh, Knight of Pentacles, this could be you, Virgo. Uh, this is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The Knights are a card of action, but this this, this one's slow. This one is slow, 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 slow. This knight will get there. This knight will make his offer. He will deliver his message. He will. There will be a, a groundedness to the message, but this knight is slow. And it's kind of a pain in the ass, especially to us Geminis, because we do not do well with patience. That's one of the reasons this is my least favorite night. Yeah, they get there. Sure they do, but they're slow. So slow. And I know for myself, I'm not good with patience, even though I am a Virgo rising. Um, but that's the current situation. Something is moving really slow, moving on to calmer waters with a king of cups. That is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and... Somebody could have a choice between two here. Um, that could be a possibility because you've got the King of Cups and the King of Wands. 
but it appears that the situation is moving on to calmer waters with the King of Cups. King of Wands, King of Spears here, this person is kind of flashy, flamboyant, out there, can be a little egotistical, not really good at expressing emotion, is a mature person, don't get me wrong. Um, not not a bad person at all. This person is flamboyant, looks good, says the right thing, smells good, all of that neat stuff. Not necessarily always the safest bet, but but still a decent person. It's just somebody that moves ahead with passion and is definitely the more mature version of the Knight of Wands, which can be seen as the player card. So it's not that this is a bad person at all, but this person can be rather egotistical and moves forward with a little bit of impulsiveness um, and moves forward in a flamboyant style. This person is passionate. This is the hell yes, hell no guy. The hell yes, hell no guy he makes quick snap decisions. Not always the best decision maker, but... Still, nevertheless, not a bad person, not a bad person at all. So it could be that, um, and again, doesn't have to be male. A female can be in this energy as well. Um, same is true for the King of Cups. There's no gender in tarot. So whatever this situation it is, is, it is moving into karma waters. There is mature emotion here. An offer is being made very, very slowly. And someone is doing this with some amount of passion. So, all right, Virgo. Well, what can you expect from this person in this situation? What can you as a Virgo expect from this person in this situation? What can my Vir Virgos expect from this person? The Hierophant. The Devil. And the Three of Swords. Wow. Underneath the bottom of the deck, Queen of Swords. You can expect for somebody to be hurt. Somebody is going to be hurt here. The Hierophant is a card of, it can be a card of judge, police officer. can be a card of somebody maybe in the military. It's a card of Taurus. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, we, we did talk about the the fire signs, the king of wands was Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, king of cups is all your water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, Knight of Coins, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The higher font is card of Taurus. This is someone, this is what you can expect from them. And this is rules, regulations, institutions, this is laws. This can be a card of marriage, but it can also be a judge. It can be a police officer. It can be somebody in the military. It can be um, any number of things. Anything where an institution or set of rules or doctrine or dogma or whatever has been set in place. This can be somebody that has their own constitution, their own laws, their own moral mindset. And they are following it. The devil, card of Capricorn. This is a card of the shadow side, addictions. It can be a card just of Capricorn, period. So you may be dealing with a Capricorn. Um, if so, this is somebody standing in their power. But this is, this is usually the, the devil is somebody that is very tempting, very lustful. Um, and again, this can speak to the shadow side. It can speak to things that are more superficial. Um, it can speak to addictions, to either sex, drugs, alcohol, gaming, anything that is, a, you know, anything that you can be addicted to. You could be, you could be addicted to crocheting. You know what I mean? Um, so just again, take it how it resonates. Three of Swords. Either you can expect heartbreak from this person, or you can expect this person to be heartbroken. Either way. 
somebody is moving slow in this situation. Somebody is just not coming up with it. And uh, so what you can expect is that somebody is going to be sticking their rules and somebody is going to, you know, be invoking their shadow side a little bit. And it's going to lead to hurt feelings somehow. Queen of Swords. Again, we see the Queen of Swords once again. And this is how they saw you as the Queen of Swords. They see you as someone who is intelligent, communicating well, mature in your response. But this is somebody that's very good with words, very good with communication. Again, the card of Gemini. This could be that they, I mean, this is what you can expect. This could be you in this energy because they see you this way. And you might be giving somebody the what for. You might be telling somebody, okay, these are the rules. And I'm not worried about your addiction. You could just be telling a Capricorn off. You know what I mean? And it breaks their heart. But the Queen of Swords can be very cutting. Um, this is somebody who only speaks the truth and only tells the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. So that's why the Queen of Swords has the reputation that she does. She pulled that sword from her own back. She is strong and sturdy in her own rules and constitutions. She will only accept the truth. And if she doesn't get the truth, oh, she can hurt somebody. She can definitely do it. Hmm. So, my goodness, Virgo. All right, well... Let's keep this going here. Um, we're going to like kind of a serious little situation we got going on here, Virgo. Um, again, apply it as it fits. Only take what resonates and place yourself in the story where you see fit. Um, again, if you're happily married, this ain't your story. You know, mosey on. You know, you'll know if this is your story or not. So, just again, take it and apply it as it fits. All right. Potential outcome for this situation for my Virgos. What is potential outcome for my Virgos? Two of Wands, the High Priestess, and Temperance. Underneath the bottom of the deck, Six of Cups. Well, Virgo, um... Two of Wands, this is choosing what ships you want to come in. Three of Wands is waiting for your ships to come in. Two of Wands is making that choice and balancing it out, deciding what you actually want. Someone is going to use their own intuition to connect with their higher self, and they are going to be silent about it. And this situation is going to require patience. It is going to require patience and divine timing on it. There's a card of Sagittarius. we got Pisces there. Underneath the bottom of the deck, Six of Cups. This could very well be about someone from your past. And it's, it's one of those situations that's just going to require you to choose what it is that you actually want to make that choice. And for the time being, be silent about it and wait in divine timing just hold up again when i'm putting this out is right in the middle of mercury retrograde and i think it actually ends tomorrow this energy only lasts for about a week or two so you know don't don't go overboard with it everything's everything's going to be all right it's not the end of the world it is just the energy as is for the time being this will change change is constant change is the only constant and again, this could definitely be about someone from your past with that Six of Cups there. So what is your advice, Virgos? What is your advice in this situation? What is the advice for my Virgos? Because someone is making their choice. Someone is being silent. 
and this situation requires divine timing. So what is the advice from the universe for my Virgos? Queen of Cups, be mature and loving. A hermit, there you are. Card of Virgo, stand in your power. The Death and Rebirth card, transform it. And Tower card, card of Scorpio. Virgo, your advice is be emotionally strong. Be loving and kind about the situation. You don't have to be rude to anybody. Understand that other people can get their feelings hurt and know that you can get your feelings hurt as well. But be emotionally mature and kind about the situation. Bring love into the situation. Hermit, this is a card. Uh, this is your card. Card of Virgo. This is a card of somebody going within and seeking their own happiness and healing by sticking to themselves, being quiet. Maybe a, this this could represent you underneath the high priestess here. You know, being a little reserved, holding back with the death card. Whatever this situation is, it needs to transform. It needs to go from the current situation and be reborn. Um there's there's got to be an end to the cycle there's got to be uh there's a, there's a death there's a change and a transformation of this situation when the tower card underneath the bottom of the deck whatever the foundation of this was needs to come to the ground whatever it is definitely needs a change because it was not built on a stable foundation that doesn't mean that it won't come back. And a tower card is just an unexpected, unforeseen circumstance that comes forward that is emotionally powerful. A tower card can be good or bad. Winning the lottery, that's a tower moment. So there needs to be a change to this situation, and there needs to be love brought into the situation. And you need to go within and really search your feelings about this. Because you need to make the proper decision for yourself. And whatever this situation is, it needs to transform. It needs to transform, Virgo. So you need to bring love into this situation and be emotionally mature. Otherwise, it is going to cause a pretty severe tower moment. Uh, and five of wands under that. And if you don't do that, if you don't come at this situation with love, if you don't go within and really search, if you don't come at this with love and you don't come at this after having gone in and really sought out your feelings about it, if you don't transform the situation from what it was to what it should be, if you go within, you'll find the right answers. You will find the right answer if you go in and do a deep soul dive. You will find the right answer if you bring love and care and true emotion into the situation. Then the situation, as stressful as it is, whatever it is, that situation will transform. If you don't do that, it will completely come to an end. So you just need to be sure your advice is to come at this with love, to really search yourself, search your feelings, go within and approach this situation with love and care. So Virgo, wow. That is what I have for you this week. It seems to be kind of, uh, uh, you know, to be continued here because it's a Little bit of drama going on, but again, it's only for one or two weeks, so we can, you know, we can work with this. There's going to be little bumps in the road sometimes, but you got this, boo boo. Make sure you're pouring into yourself and taking care of yourself, and then be good to yourself. And as you're good to yourself, and you're showing people true, genuine love, care, honesty, openness. If you're telling the truth, the truth can be a little biting and hurting sometimes, but as long as you're gentle, kind, and you come at things with empathy and real emotion and caring, you should be able to come out of the situation just fine and transform, thus avoiding some huge tower moment. So that's what I have for my Virgo Collective. I will leave it there for now. 
Thank you all for being here, and thank you once again for your likes, shares, comments, subscribes, all the little things. Do leave me a comment and let me know how this resonates with you. If you need a personal reading, my uh, personal readings are open now. Just email themojotero at gmail.com. You can find the address in the description box. And, you know, again, leave me a comment. Let me know how this resonates with you. If you vibe with my readings, please hit that subscribe button. And please do click that little like button for me. It does greatly help me out. Make sure you're doing it for everyone else, too. We are so grateful as content providers for you doing that. So, everyone, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Love, love, love. Peace. Good dog.